hello and welcome back uh so today we are going to take a look at how to create color palettes now the reality is most of the time brands are going to give you colors their colors to work with right and some clients might be you know attached to some certain colors and they will give you this instruction to use a particular color for that design and you want to you know create palettes from those colors but in some few cases they might not give you these colors and they will tell you to go and generate colors and then maybe they can test before they choose the colors now the first thing you need to know is that colors have you know uh, some aso psychological associations so when you come to this website you can see that colors like red are associated with passion love and anger things like uh, blue is associated with calm responsible and sadness you know they just have these uh, emotions that they are uh, attached to Let's say you are designing a social media platform, a financial uh, app or a healthcare app. You can just, you know, stick around with the blue. If you're designing something like a dating app, you know, a restaurant app, you can just stick around with red. Okay. So you stick around with some of these standards. So you stick around with some of these standards. But sometimes you can also, you know, break uh, out of these standards. Okay. So, but just know that colors have moods. You know, they have this mood that they convey. It's very, very important for you to have this at the back of your mind before choosing a color, right? Now, once you've chosen a color, the next thing you need to now know about is applying the 60-30 rule. So, the 60-30 rule is basically what you see in a lot of apps and websites whereby you have a dominant color taking off 60%, uh, you know, the, uh, another color taking off 30 and another taking off 10, okay? So, what exactly do you need to create um, a color palette? Okay, so basically to create a color palette, you need three categories of colors. The first one is the brand color. And the brand color is usually made up of the primary, the secondary, and the ascent color. This is the main color you are probably going to be working with, which is the primary, right? Sometimes you might work with primary and ascent. Sometimes you might work with primary and secondary and ascent. In most cases, your secondary uh, color might even be the ascent color, right? Now, once you've gotten your primary colors, the next thing you want to work on are your neutral colors, okay? Your neutral colors. And once you've gotten your neutral colors, the next thing you want to probably get are your semantic colors okay your semantic colors now your semantic colors are divided into four they are the neutral uh the, the neutral the one you use for you know system messaging you have the success then you have warning and you have danger so you just want to create some of this palette so that you can use it you can create it from from the scratch and start using it across your platform so how do you start let's go ahead and just uh, do something here so let's assume i want to create a color the first thing i need is my starting point which is my primary color so i can just go ahead let me draw uh, a box and draw a box there and let's go ahead and do something like uh, so let's go ahead and choose uh, a blue color let's go ahead a few and choose that a blue color Okay, so we're here we have this blue color. So let's assume this, I want this to be our primary color, okay? What I can do in order to get my ascent color, okay? I can just copy this color. Then go to Adobe, uh, Adobe Color Wheel, right? I can just type in colors.adobe.com. Then I want to make sure I'm on this color wheel, right? So I can come in here, the center one, you can see we have five. I want to come to the center one and paste that color then hit enter now this is going to generate different color uh, different color schemes for us based on whatever we are, the color harmony we are selecting and one of the the two, the two most popular one i use is either i use complementary right so it gives me this kind of color or i go for the double split complementary color now why i like the double split com complementary color is most of the time it gives you both your secondary color and your ascent color now how do you choose your secondary and ascent color the way i do mine is basically to come in here you can see the primary color i choose right now i can choose any of this beside it as my secondary color so basically if i'm choosing this one as my secondary color i might want to choose this as my ascent color right if i'm choosing this as my secondary color i might want to use this as my ascent color so basically that's what i do so let me go ahead and select this as my ascent color okay so i'm just going to go back to figma and duplicate this and now i have my primary and my ascent color now with our ascent color the next thing i want to go ahead and do is to get our neutral color so let me just do ctrl d right there so my neutral color let me bring this right here okay so what i basically like doing is come in here you want to go from hex 
to HSB. Now, once I'm on HSB, you see, you want to drag this somewhere here. Just make sure it has that, you know, blue things right inside. This should be the starting point of our gray. Remember, we're going to create different shades of this gray. So you want to come in here. Just ensure that you don't shift this hue right here. Instead, you can, you know, desaturate it and also reduce the brightness. Okay. So this right here is a good starting point for our grays. Okay. The next thing I want to go ahead and do right now is to get our semantic colors. Now, the semantic colors, we are going to use the shades of blue for the neutral and for success, we'll use yellow. Uh, for success, we're going to use green. For warning, we're going to use um, yellow. And for danger, we'll use red. So to generate those colors, I'm just going to click here, duplicate this, okay? And I want to go ahead, the same color, let me make it three, okay? Let me have it because we need three, three extra, okay? Uh, then we'll arrange all these things later. So now I want to go ahead and get for my success. For my success, I want to click this. Now you want to keep your eyes right here, okay? And the next thing you want to do is to just, you know, change the color. You, know, you want to go with something greeny. Okay, so let's uh, stay somewhere here. And I might just want to, you know, dial this down. Now watch, we have 84.95. You don't want to go too far, okay? Okay, great. So I have those green right there. And now I can go in here to create for the warning. So for the warning, I will just come in here, dial it down to yellow, yellowish. Okay, I think somewhere around there is okay. And for our danger, we want to just go ahead now and you know take this maybe along the red side. Let's come in along this side. Okay, great. Okay, great. And I think for my green, I want to just dial it down a little bit. Okay. Now, the most important thing is that you keep an eye right here. It shouldn't be uh, way more different than the original. Remember, right here on the main color, we have 84 and 95, right? So make sure you keep a close tab. We still, we still have 95 here. And then here we now have 72. It, the, the difference between the saturation and the brightness shouldn't be too much. You know, what you can do is to just shift the hue. So once I have my colors, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is to generate the different shades of that color. And how do I do that? All I need to do is to let me select this and du duplicate this eight more times. So I have nine. OK, because I want to have four shades of the light tone and then four shades of the dark tone. OK, so let me duplicate this. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate that one. We just need eight. OK, let me just go ahead two three four five six seven eight let me count it one two three four five six seven eight nine okay great now the fifth one this particular one is going to be the main color then i start from uh, i start from here so basically what i want to do is to come in here and since i have 84 here i basically want to minus 20. that's the progression on the saturation, I use the sat you use the saturation to control the light ones and you use the brightness to control the dark ones. So once I come and make sure you're on HSB, okay? So once you're on 84, I want to do minus 20, then I have 64. Then I come in here and I want to do 64 minus 20. Then I have 44. Then I want to come in here and do 44 minus 20. Then I have 24. Now here, 24 minus 20 is going to give me four. But what I like doing at that last one is to actually make this 100. So I have the purest form of that light blue. Okay. Now coming over here, what I want to go, what I want to do right here now is to come in here. Now I'm going to maintain this, maintain my hue, maintain my saturation. But now on the brightness, instead of 95, I want to do minus 20 right the same thing that's 75 75 minus 20 right here okay 75 minus 20 i have 55 so coming in here i have 55 minus 20 55 minus 20 i have 35 there and if i do 35 minus 20 i should go ahead and have 15 okay and this is it so i've gotten my light shade and my dark shade but here is the thing what you can also do is to come in here, okay, copy this color, 
and use our favorite plugin, right? Come in here, go to plugin and go to foundation color generator. And I'm just going to change this to material and I'm going to go space that right there. Now let's compare the both of them. Let's go and hit palette. Okay. So it creates the palette for us. Okay. Uh, let me just close this out. Now I just want us to compare the both of them. Okay. Let's compare this to. Okay. Now you can see they are almost the same. Okay. They are almost the same. You can see we have the same variation right here. Let's take a look at the difference between this one. So let's take a look at the difference between this and ours. You have 25 and you have 98, right? Let's take a look at our own. Here you have 24 and 95. You can see just a little bit of difference. Okay. So what you can do is you can use this system to create yours, or you can just use the material, uh, color generator to generate it. It's actually faster. And what I always like to do is to come back here to that last one because I don't always like that last one and I make it four somewhere around four. I always like four. Okay. I always like four and hundred for those last ones. They're just a little bit more better. So you can do this as well. So I'm just going to go ahead now and uh, you can decide to, you know, use the calculation I just showed you to do this, or you can go ahead to use material color generator to generate this one. So uh, let me put this here. Okay. Let me put this here and I'm just going to generate for the remaining colors. So let's go in the material color generator and we want to choose this color, this color right here, uh, right? And make sure you choose material. Okay. Enter it and you want to generate that color right there. So click on palette and it's going to come in. Okay. It's going to bring in that palette right there. Okay. Uh, let me take it here. And there you go. We now have our complete palette ready to use. So this is basically how I generate uh, colors for my project and it works all the time. Okay. It works all the time. Like I said, the only tweak I make sometimes is to come in here and make sure I have something around four. I don't always like it up to eight. Okay. Four, six, right? I always like it somewhere around that, uh, that point right there, four and six. And this is how you create your color palette for your project. See you in the next class.